his interest in in bird watching you know was you know from his childhood reading and he is the the guy you mentioned in your book you know um, yes, yes. <laughs> well, no, and we hadn't even really spoken about him and so it's it was just really bizarre that 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 happened mm -hmm. um but um yeah no thank you for sharing that that's really that's really interesting and and i think he i think from what i wrote in the book he really added the conversation to the use of narrative therapy that really when you when we write our own narratives you know the story of our lives when you reauthor them um it really gives us an opportunity to reframe um and sort of you know look at look at our life from a, a, di a different more po positive perspective um and perhaps even find closure um and find meaning from what's from everything that's happened to us um so i think yeah so i think i really appreciate i, I think i quoted him in the book and i really appreciated his his work i think that he's written the, the the i've forgotten the title of the book the just dialogues discourse and something else about alan bainbridge and he um he really pulls together you know he gives a really good example of, of why narrative therapy is so so powerful because it connects the past and the future and it um really allows us to and it really allows us to externalize our story onto the page but then also uh put some perspective um on it so um yeah i'd recommend the, the read <laughs> i recommend the book um it's a good read um yeah so i i think essentially yeah i think that was that was my my sort of response around the prescription aspects um i don't know if i ever get it completely right but i hope i get i give enough to sort of um ha you know people have enough literature to work with um often i'll only select suggest you know seven to ten books and then people will only read one or two but those one or two books are the ones that really um will help them um sort of with their own uh journaling or literary journaling or reflections and and then you know they're able to bring that to me in in the sessions and then we can discuss those um so so yeah so it's it only ever takes like two or three books out of a set of 10 you know <laughs> to to make the magic happen mm. you make some very good points in creative bibliotherapy you know the techniques like you said writing letters writing essays writing poetry journaling uh, writing poetry i was particularly uh, interested in because you 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 shared one of your poems in this first chapter a quite a long poem and uh, it's something that i've you know always encouraged my students to do to to write poetry and to share their poetry it's a, it's a wonderful way of um, of empathising with people to write poetry. Yeah, um, we, yeah, I, I, it, it really is. I mean, I know it's not always going to be for everyone, um, and this is the discussion that you know I was having with my editor. But for people who really resonate with poetry, um, it's a very wonderful way to capture emotion. Um, and sometimes to be able to put down exactly what you're feeling without necessarily going through you know the motions on on when we're writing by you know stream of consciousness journaling mm -hmm. uh it really allows us to capture symbol symbolism uh emotion in a very sort of precise way uh which you know hones in on what we're feeling and by i the poem i wrote in the book in, in that first section yeah i wanted to show people that it doesn't have to be an, an amazing poem you, you know you're writing this poem for yourself and if it's doing something for you is it, if it's allowing you to capture some of the emotions that you're feeling then it's a worthwhile exercise um to do so yeah i wonder i do wonder what uh, how people receive that if, if they read that if they read it have you any more questions coming in we shall see any no, oh um let's see yes we've just had um rebecca hi rebecca um she said she's a literature phd student working on bibliotherapy and shakespeare's comedies if i may ask two questions do you include any drama extracts in your bibliotherapy practice how did you get into bibliotherapy 
Yeah, so the, in terms of the first question, you know, I haven't, I normally uh, only suggest things that people request and bizarrely enough, I haven't really had many um, requests for drama extracts. Um, but of course, you know, if somebody did want it, I would, I would perhaps, you know, go and go and look for that. Um, because, you know, obviously, as we know, with Greek tragedies and plays, there's definitely a, a place for that. Um, because anything that's, you know, whether that's cinema therapy or, or books or art, whatever, whatever's evoking emotions in us, which we can then take to a therapist or a counselor, um, is is extremely useful. Um, uh, you know, it's it's very valuable material for our own sessions. So, um, if there was a request for that, then I would definitely include that. I, I did, you know, in my in in my practice two or three years ago, come across a cinema therapist, and you know, she talked a lot about. Um, you know, drama. Um, so there is definitely a, a space for drama. Um, and I don't know, um, I think Shakespeare's comedies are, would be wonderful um, alongside some of the Greek tragedies as well. I, I think they, they are, they're brilliant. I, I really do. I mean, I, I go about it in the book, but I'm, I'm a huge fan of the ancient Greeks and, and everything that they've contributed to literature um, and therapy and, you know, stoicism. Um, but in terms of how did I get into bibliotherapy? So I, you know, I sort of did some training in counseling and psychodynamic counseling. And, you know, that in itself is, was a process. And um, I learned, you know, a very sort of Freudian approach, but I found myself using a lot of um, books in my own therapy. And I, I write about that as one of my journeys in the book. I think it's the first story um and um i found i found literature really helpful especially as an introvert because sometimes i you know it wouldn't necessarily be easily be able to share my story but i think um the literature give, is is a great prompt you know and it also gives you a lot of language and vocabulary and um just just examples that you can then take um to a counselor or a therapist so that you know that for me was was a really eye-opening moment and, and then obviously the more i looked into the use of literature as a therapeutic tool you know i found this whole history of, of therapeutic reading and which i talk about in the book but also dr calder green's work on on some she wrote an incredible book called rethinking therapeutic reading and um her research has been really really interesting in terms of you know mapping out the history of, of therapeutic reading um yeah, you say visual and you say uh those resistant to normal forms of counseling can open up to a literary text and i think that's a really true you know from what you say in your book uh it's a different you know it's something that can only be done through literature you know, yeah but, yeah um, and yeah. you found that, did you? That, you know, that that was the case with people. People would open up to literature. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, look, I think especially with, with children, for example, who don't have the language, I think stories are like the first form of language for them because they can connect with stories more readily. Um, so I definitely found that. And I also found, you know, for clients who might be more anxiously avoidant, or you know, struggling, you know, have some sort of attachment mm -hmm. issues. You know, they, I call it well. You know, I don't like to label things, but you know, I just found it. Um, I just found that they would be more open to reading, and and sometimes they don't necessarily want to see see you. They, they're happy with a like a book prescription, mm -hmm. and then and and some suggestions of, you know, journaling techniques or these bibliotherapy techniques that they can use at home. They don't really want like, they don't really want a counseling session, but they want to be able to do something themselves at home. Um, and so my goal with the book, I guess as well, was to provide some techniques that you can do at home yourself, um, bibliotherapy at home. Um, but, you know, some people like to have that conversation and I think there's definitely a place for that as well. Um, Sorry, I don't know if there was one person just adding them. 
Q and A. Um, I think we've just had another question uh, as well. Um, I work with people who often have send or learning differences. Is bibliotherapy adjustable for people who have those concerns that are adverse to reading? My siblings and daughter are all dyslexic and I have a barrier up around reading, but are all really good as imaginative and expressive. Yes, so um, absolutely. Um, I don't know if you read the story about the little, the eight-year-old who, who has dyslexia in the book, but um, you know, he read, I mean, obviously he was, he's a child, so he, you know, we, we focused on graphic novels with him. Um, but absolutely, look, I always connect my clients with literature that they're going to read, because that's really important that A, they connect with it and that they're actually going to read the books. So it's definitely adjustable for, for people with, with different learning um, abilities, um, including Sen. Um, so, and graphic novels for, for, for people who might be, you know, years behind in their reading are a brilliant way to sort of start off. Even um, audiobooks, I know some people argue that audiobooks is not really reading, but look, it, it's, it's, a, it's a form of storytelling. So from that perspective, I would still classify it as reading or I'd still classify it as some as a as a bibliotherapy option or format that we can use. Um, so, you know, I would I, I would probably get you know your siblings or your daughter to to fill out or you know or for you to fill out a questionnaire on their behalf just to work out what they enjoy reading, where they are with their reading levels, and then tailor something appropriate for them. Um, but we do the the barrier is what we want to pull you know sort of down and so we want to suggest something that they are really likely to read and engage with that's really really important um if I may and, you, that's, an, that's an excellent chapter about leo the that um his uh graphic novels were the answer to his autism which i found a fantastic read uh this is it's one of the later chapters in the book isn't it but um really superb the way you've shown how leo responded uh, to that and became a new person really as i was reading i could see how well he responded to what you were doing um and you know found had such greater confidence in himself which i thought was you know particularly good but one other thing that occurred to me while you were talking was uh children listening to stories is is a an excellent way as well as graphic writing you can uh, read stories to children i was um with my granddaughter on monday and i did yeah, they have this section where um adults can read to the children to the class you see and i read them a winnie the pooh story you know <laughs> and they were really they really enjoyed it really took it in were really listening uh it was just about 10 minutes you know very very quick and short but Reading and listening to people is is the other factor, I think, isn't it? In in uh, with stories. So sorry that, that I just thought I would <laughs> would tell would share that with you too. Um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. No, I think I'm I'm so happy to hear that um, that that chapter resonated with you and you know the, in your stories about reading to children because I think. I think it's giving them a, you know, it's also role modeling and it's giving them a way in to sort of, you know, this is how you can use books. Um, or but just, you know, getting them interested in books to begin with, you know, it's it's a great step. And um I think I think, you know, there's I don't know, I've had a lot of emails about how there's been such a decline in reading, um, especially not in the younger generation. So it's really lovely to see <laughs> here that you've been Oh. you know you've been going in to read um to your granddaughter um because i just i just think we need to do more of it um mm -hmm. but anyway that aside i think yeah i think for, for children it is it's 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 wonderful and you know you can combine that with sand play or you know um sand tray exercises which is you know playing playing with toys um in the sand or just without the sound <laughs> or drawing um drawing is a great way to sort of 
you know, get them to engage in dialogue as well. Um, so, and then of course, if they're a little bit older and want to experiment a little bit with writing, um, then they can definitely do that. And sometimes they might not be able, like with narrative therapy, they might not be able to rewrite their own stories, but they can tell you and you can write it as they're telling you. Um, so, um, and that was the the technique I think I used with Leo. But yeah, narrative therapy is, is great because it's it's really allowing the child to reframe their story and because they're so young, they're more open to it. And um, it's it's great. Like it's a really sort of positive way of um, empowering them. So I, I really like using I really like using that with 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 kids. And I know a lot of speech and language therapists use narrative therapy with children as well especially when they're having difficulties and you know in, in their speech or in their, in their reading um so yeah so I, I you know i don't know if that answered your question around sen but it's really interesting also to hear that they're really good in your question uh that they're really good writers imaginative or expressive um writers yeah they they all have these superpowers um especially you know everybody who's got learning difficulty in, in one way will have a super superpower on the other side so i'm not surprised that you know <laughs> they're great writers um oh somebody has raised their hand jody um okay one second shall i just answer kathleen's question and then um, Jody, we can go to you. Um, sure. Okay. Um, okay, great. Thanks. Um, so, following up on the graphic novels comments, have you ever used wordless books? I'm working getting more of these into my school libraries. I'm a school librarian to encourage people to connect with reading through images. Oh, that's 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 a great suggestion. I haven't actually even thought about wordless books. Is that is that picture books, Kathleen? Um, where are you? I should unmute you. Actually, you can answer that question. Um, I can't actually see you. Uh, can you see her, Peter? Can you see Kathleen? Uh, I wanted to just uh, ask a about wordless books. Um, oh, hey, oh, there you are. Hi. Sorry. Yeah, I don't. I don't have the camera on. Um, yeah, it's things like um, Sean Tan is a good example of an author. Um, he's his images are just very surreal and interesting, and yeah, he he's one that's been really popular. But um, because I mean, I'm in a secondary school. I'm in two secondary schools, and one of them is pupils with extra support needs extra learning needs so there's like uh, deaf children children who have very minimal visibility uh, vision this kind of thing so that's where the audiobooks would be better but um yeah it's kind of the ones like i don't like reading i'm like well look at this it's pictures and so yeah it's just it's just something i'm trying to um work on and develop a bit so i just i just wonder if you had comments but i can i can send you some suggestions of books if that's yeah that would be that would be wonderful actually yeah. um I, I i i love to to receive suggestions and i have a, like a children's a to z reading list so i, I that's you know few for people to access so I, i'd love to add that on i can i can mention you as well for for suggesting those um and in terms <laughs> of wordless books i think yeah i mean i think picture books are great because they're a form of art therapy aren't they in yeah. terms of discussion that they provoke so i think definitely um i love oliver jeffers's books i know that they have some words to them but um i know like even adults who, who sometimes use their use those picture books you know adults with dementia have used oliver jeffers's books um and uh they're, they're wonderful on getting the conversation started and and they're quite insightful i find okay um, i need to look him up that that wasn't someone i was aware of so thank you yeah um, Oliver Jeffers, yeah he's great yeah. Um, um well yeah sorry for kind of taking over <laughs> I'll, I'll let you get back to what you were talking about oh yeah no worries thanks for the question kathleen thank, thank you. you um and i I think we had a question from Jodie. I'm just going to unmute you, Jodie. Um, 
Oh, are you able to unmute yourself? Or I oh. can't see it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Hi there. I'm in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Hi, Jody. Oh, wow. Nice to see daylight and the sun. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a question. Um, I haven't read your book yet, but I'm planning to get it. I know it's out in the US early next year, so I'm sorry about Oh, that. not till next year, dang it. Well, you okay, can, well, you just get it from the UK. You can get it from Amazon UK or, or one of the independents. Um, I don't want to constantly promote oh, Amazon. But. Okay. <laughs> well, what, what, my, what my question was um, I was just curious in your research, I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017, and for some reason, I started reading Handmaid's Tale, which has nothing to do with breast cancer, but it was very dark. And I thought, this is weird. I should be reading happy things or encouraging things. But in a weird reverse psychology way, like that world was so dark, it took my mind off things, if that makes sense. So I wonder if you ever actually recommend kind of dark or tragic reads around a particular topic or struggle someone's having, you know, yeah. might be contrary to what we might think, like, oh, they need to read some survival story or overcoming or something. But for some weird reason, I associate that book with, with breast cancer. <laughs> and I'm doing fine now, by the way, but. Oh, oh, good. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry to um, hear about your, your diagnosis, but I'm hoping that you're in recovery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, it's really interesting what you said about um, us turning to sort of darker, you know, to, to, to darker stories um, during real tr times of trouble. There's some, it's, it's, it's a known phenomenon, like, I mean, I, I know that I have turned to war novels during really difficult times. Um, okay. Is there something about the trauma that we can um, connect with in, in these darker stories that sort of allow us to accept and um, sit with our own pain and perhaps, you know, in some ways feel gratitude that we're not in those situations, but, but uh -huh. and feel like it's okay it's okay to have this 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 feel this uncomfortable feeling that we you know that we're sitting with um so yeah I, the the trauma novels uh the the, the, the trauma um yeah I, I talk about it in my on my online course how you know sometimes we we, we want to read horror novels because there's a real uh space for exercising our own you know our own fears um oh okay like like catharsis yeah it's very cathar cathartic okay well um, all right thank you good answer i just wondered if i was a complete weirdo <laughs> no 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 and, it, and it's not alone. <laughs> thing how a lot of us, a lot of us turn to these darker stories and yeah right. yeah thanks and it also allows us to, to put some it puts some distance as well between ourselves and we're going through it allows us to externalize our own our own situation as well um it's about catharsis um Jean, and in your book you say that brings insight doesn't it the catharsis you identify the thing then you have the you're reading then the catharsis occurs and then that brings an insight yes that's in um yeah page 35 in your book <laughs> yeah, that's right that's the therapy methodology that um that caroline schroeds uh, yeah. put together in her dissertation it's what, it's what jody wanted you know she wanted insight into what you know what she was feeling uh, yeah 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 you, you can go dark and get insight through going dark i agree yeah. with that very much yeah yeah, because it's it's harder to sit with those, to connect with those feelings in every day. Um, sorry, I'm just admitting somebody. Someone else? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the comments. Um, have we got everyone? I'm just admitting some people. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. Look, I wanted to open up the floor because I don't think we have, like, nobody else is sort of put down oh okay no oh, thanks mandy she's just uh, mandy's just kindly suggested that we can order the book with um 
with Blackwells from the UK because they offer free shipping to the US. That's such a brilliant idea. Thank you. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> That's great. Great to hear. Um, so yeah, if you're so Jody, there you go. You can get it. You can get it from the UK from Blackwells. <laughs> it's free shipping. Um, and Linda's just asked. Oh, Beth Kempton told you. Oh, that's great. <laughs> um, yeah, I love Beth Kempton. <laughs> I love Wabi Sabi. Um, and she was kind enough to to um, endorse my book. Um, and then Linda Stevenson, hi, hi, Visual. I was wondering if you've done some specific work with pandemic related issues that people have experienced, i.e. loss. Um, yes, I have. Like, I mean, to be honest, loss is a really, really big part of my practice because everyone's going through some sort of loss, whether that's a breakup, whether that's a career change, whether that's leaving home and moving to another country. And then, of course, um, we have this sort of more difficult, you know, the, the, the more permanent and, and tragic losses, you know, when someone, someone dies or we lose someone uh, very close to us. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've definitely worked on pandemic related issues in general, you know, they, they tend to fall under under grief. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll suggest fiction and nonfiction um, for that. Um, I can I can definitely suggest some books if, if I if, if you're more specific about the issues, but, um, you know, things like um, Megan Devine's um, It's OK or Not OK. Is, is great languages of loss i think by julia bates is great um joanne didion's my year of magical thinking obviously that's a very well-known one but even um ann tyler's um a beginner's goodbye um and there's a there's a lot of there's actually a lot of work on lost lost and found is is the one that my clients find has been the most helpful um i've had a lot of positive responses from clients on, on lost and uh, lost and found by Catherine schultz um, so, yeah, loss is loss is a big part, um, and actually, loss is just—I mean, life is a series of losses. Um, so you know, and then you're always balancing that out with with the hope and and the good things that also happen. And I think Catherine Schultz's book, Lost and Found, is really a wonderful balance between yes, I lost I lost my dad, but I found my partner. You know. Um, and it all happens at the same time. And I think it's that bittersweetness of life um, that Susan Cain in her book talks about in, in great depth. But um, yeah, it's I have done a lot of work with loss, uh, for sure. Um, and I think there was one more question as well. Um, uh, you ever recommend children's books to your adult clients? Yes, I do. I do, and I do think if I, if you were here, Ross, um, when I mentioned that um, I use a lot of um, picture books with um, like demen like dementia clients, um, or sort of um, yeah, like the Oliver Jeffers books. So yeah, they've they definitely there is definitely a space for children's books um, with adults and. Oliver Jeffers' book actually is like picture books written for adults more than they are written for kids. Um, so I, I, I would definitely suggest checking those out. Um, he's, he's written quite a few great illustrations, but also very, very sort of meaningful um, insights in very short sentences and great, you know, great plot and story around it. Um, Okay, sorry, somebody's just raised their hand. Linda Rounds. Um, yeah, Linda Rounds, yes. Oh, yeah. Hi, no. Linda. Are you on? Do you want to um, perhaps unmute yourself so I can just hear your question? Linda, are you there? I think you might have to unmute it. Um, because I, I can't do it on my end. No. Yeah, she's, she's there. She's there. Okay, well, maybe we'll come back to her. Um, she's, she's muted at the moment. Did jo Jody have a question as well? Jody, did you have a question? Jody? No. no. 
Okay, it's just Linda. Did somebody else? I saw someone else, but okay, it might just be Linda. Okay, um, Linda, you might have to unmute yourself, otherwise um, you won't be able to hear your question. Okay. Um, Can you unmute yourself, Linda? Yeah, no, she hasn't. And I don't think I've got any more questions on the Q and A list. Mm -hmm. Just gonna have a quick look at the mm. poll to see. Oh, nobody's on the poll. <laughs> um, oh, who wrote the Lost and Found book? That was Catherine Schultz. I'll just put it in the chat. Catherine Schultz. Great book on grief. Um, I don't know her. That's it's, it's not a. How, how do you spell that? Sure, Catherine. Oh yeah, I'm just putting it in the chat. So yeah. she, she's a she's a journalist for the New Yorker, but she's um. You might find it difficult to get into at the beginning, but if you stick with it, it's it's really it's wonderful. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Um. And is that a factual book? Um. It's um no, it's memoir. Yeah, it's memoir. Right. It's yeah. Just, uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's the other another form, isn't it, of reading therapy. If you can read a person's memoir, yes, identify with what they're writing about, then you can feel the healing that they're they're giving you from their memoir. Um yeah. 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 So memoir and novels, like I mentioned, are very sort of similar in their in their narrative form mm. you one's more fictitious and one's a true story but you know it's again it's very narrative driven it's very character driven so it's rather than plot driven and that character driven aspect of it sort of allows us to connect with you know, the the memoirists or the authors um innermost feelings the character's feelings and emotions and, and that's and that's essentially what you know what we're looking for in a, in a sort of therapeutic relationship with mm. with the author and and the client you can identify with memoir writing can't you, very easily yes yeah, yeah. Mm. and they actually did um and i talk about this in the book but they actually did a study where they found that um when when you read um fiction your and and they and they got somebody to read um a story written as a, as a, as a as a fiction in a fiction format versus a, a story that was more factual and report based at uh, the same story and what they found was um that the people who read the fiction based story they did a like a the big five personality trait inventory assessment on them as well as a emotional checklist assessment and they found that they were more emotionally moved they felt that their personalities are more influenced by the, the fictitious story as opposed to the factual written report, even though it was the same story. Really? This goes to show that that that, that fiction really, really moves us. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also really a great book by Lisa Sunshine called Why We Read Fiction, Theory of Mind. And it's mm -hmm. fiction really allows us to mental allows us to mentalize and take on um, the mental states of other people um, mm -hmm. through, you know, third person perspective, um, which is harder sometimes to do with something that's more report based or factual. So like a newspaper, a newspaper article just doesn't evoke like the same sort of feelings that, you know, a fiction, a piece of literary fiction would, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so it's really interesting um, to see how how all these genres in themselves have have a real you know role to play yes i i read um war and peace during you're talking about the pandemic during the pandemic i read war and peace for the first time and i identified with the, the lead character whose name is pierre but peter in russian is peter and uh, I was thoroughly identified with the character right the way through War and Peace and all the, the love affairs he has, the, yes. the sadness of the war that he's involved in, the horror that he saw um, and the recovery that he, he found. And it really helped me to get through the pandemic reading that book. It was extraordinary, yeah. actually. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and was there anything in particular that resonated 
Um, the uh, yeah, were were um, huh, were these French soldiers uh, shoot um, a group of prisoners, and the horror of him, Pierre, watching the shooting, the absolute horror of it, and I, it really, you know, you're talking. Um, Jody was talking about um, you know the horror of things, and I, I just wow. You know, he had to watch that. And it was as though, I mean, Tolstoy wrote it, it was as though the writer was there, you know, watching that, that barbaric shooting of prisoners. And, yeah. um, and it makes you think this this does happen in our world, you know, but, but you know, we can, we have to process it, don't we? We have to process all the, the goings on in Gaza at the moment. I think a lot of us are probably processing that. Yes. In our, yeah wins you know because you know what we keep seeing um nobody's fictionalized it yet but you know it's bound to come isn't it it's, uh, you know somebody will fictionalize these things um, yeah I'm, yeah I'm, and there is that yeah mm. underlying trauma that we are probably feeling from a distance yeah, yeah. Um, and so there might you know so many of us have drawn to that that conflict of course we should be because it's it's a very important part of What's going on in the world, and, and there should be awareness of it. But it's there's also something else going on that we of why we are so drawn to it, and why it's like the number one story, like it was the number one story here for so long. Um, sorry, just admitting, Nicola. Um, yeah. So you know, I think um, yeah, I think there is something about these war novels, about these pandemic stories, about. Um, you know, horror that has this effect on us. Um, and, and, you know, I think we should definitely honor those, whatever those, those feelings that are being provoked in us, we should honor those feelings and, and not sort of see it as, why am I reading this? <laughs> I think I saw a question there, Bajal, talking about the physical benefits of reading, somebody asking that. Did you see oh, that? In the chat? Yeah, I saw it the, yeah. asking about the physical benefits of reading. Oh, cool. yes, yes, yeah, there's, it was really interesting, this study that was done by David, I can't remember his surname now, but at the University of Sussex, mm -hmm. and um, he mentioned that um, about, you know, reading is by far the biggest stress reliever uh, mm -hmm. compared to, like, going for a walk or drinking a cup of tea or listening to music or playing a video game like literally reading had the greatest benefit in reducing our stress levels and um yeah and, and, and blood pressure and chronic pain i think it's there's, there's just so many benefits of of just reading alone beyond just the emotional side and the mental side um and maybe i should have focused on it more in the book <laughs> apart from this this few statistics but um yeah, thank thank you so much, um, Fion, Ros, for the question. Um, I think it's yeah. I think I think there's a real place for for reading as a form of mindfulness because it um, it takes us out of our heads, you know, and it it does it does have a similar effect to say meditation or mindfulness. Um, and so, like, I I don't practice either mindfulness and meditation but i do i do try and read every day and it's it's great <laughs> so um if nothing else just to reduce your cortisol levels uh, i'd say i'd say yeah definitely 15 minutes of reading daily um i do it at the end of end of the day but whenever works for you and you know i i, I always say that you're not going to build a reading habit unless you do it daily it's just like the toothbrush test, like, you, you know, things that you do daily, you, you stick with. Um, otherwise, you'll just become a holiday reader. So if you can fit in 10 minutes every day, I'd, I'd definitely say do that. But I know, I know it's hard, but audiobooks are also a good, good way in, you know. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, the name of the author who writes about the physical benefits of oh that was just um that was just um the university of sussex um study that was done i can find you um 
the name Kathleen is David. I can't remember his surname, but I can find um I can I can find you the name and then you know. yeah, it, is. it is in the book actually or in the last section. Oh, wow. Because and actually I was gonna write it down and I didn't. Um yeah, I don't know if you just want to have a quick look, um, Peter. And I just wanted to get back to Linda on her question. Um, how much training do you think like, is a junior person? I think. Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, if you've got a master's degree in counseling, I think the key thing is uh, sorry, everyone, I don't know if you read Linda's question, but she's asking about. Um, how much training a person needs to practice bibliotherapy and um, I always say you know if you've worked with vulnerable client like bibliotherapy is very much an adjunct skill and um, you know I've had teachers who who use it as an adjunct and so they're already qualified as teachers they already work with vulnerable um, young children or vulnerable people who are children and therefore they are add, just adding this as an extra bow to their to their string and similar to like you know I've had social workers I've had doctors who've who've done some of the training counselors psychotherapists coaches um, so they're kind of adding this as an extra skill to the work that they already do and practicing under their existing qualifications so I don't know if that helps Linda but um, but of course of, of course that's if you're looking to do it from a therapeutic perspective. I think for personal interest, it's probably a bit different. Um, yeah. Uh, somebody said I had a people today come into the library and ask for books which make you feel like you're in a big cozy chair drinking tea. <laughs> this might be one of the best descriptions of how reading can be a comfort that I've ever had. What a lovely question. Um, yeah, that is a lovely thought as well. <laughs> um, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, I'd love to hear all of your thoughts on, on, on books that <laughs> that have triggered that for you, that image for you. Um, I know I certainly have, and, and often it, it could be that crazy, like, traumatic book, <laughs> which is doing something for me you know when it's raining outside um whilst i'm drinking my cup of tea so yeah um yeah i don't know i mean i i i've been reading until august gabriel garcia marquez is is lost the lost novel that his family have just um published i don't know if any of you have read it yet um but that that book certainly comes to mind um yeah do you share yours as, as well I haven't read that one, but I've, I've got that one um, here, actually. It's um, Love in the Time of Cholera. Oh, yes, yeah. I, mean, I, didn't, was... um, I didn't really enjoy it, I'm afraid. I have to say, I put it to one side. <laughs> it, it, it disappointed me. Sometimes books, you know, do, don't they? They do. They do, they do. Yeah. yeah. And that was one you went, you just mentioned. I know his, he's had a new one, a one that's just been published hasn't it they've discovered it and he didn't want it published apparently uh, but uh, they went ahead anyway and published it but he died I mean, he's dead now but he's he said he didn't want it published yeah, <laughs> they've, anyway. gone, they've gone ahead and done it anyway <laughs> yeah. yes and it's actually okay it's not as bad as um you know for somebody who wouldn't want it to be published it's like i thought it was quite quite decent quite good um but i'd love to hear other people's thoughts on it if they've read it um but yeah he's um the magical realism aspects of his of his writing is, is wonderful it lost me that I, I wasn't keen on the magical realism i'm afraid but yeah. <laughs> in, in loving the time of cholera i didn't like it <laughs> yeah there's the other one isn't it 100 years of solitude that's one that, that, that's supposed to be the great one yeah that's yeah but I haven't tried that yet. Yeah, um, it's, it's yeah, it's quite a, quite an involving book across three generations of the Buanda family. Yeah, set in Col Colombia. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It just depends. Like, yeah, I think it depends on people's writing styles and what you connect with. You know. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but books do disappoint us, and we shouldn't really to, to read them if you if you don't. It took you a hundred years to read it, Linda's saying. Um, in Spanish, yeah, I know. Spanish. It was a long book, yeah. It took. Did you did you read that, Michelle? Someone said she read it in Spanish, and it that felt like it took a hundred years to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes books just. Oh, I can't hear you, Linda. Um, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Yeah. I, I, I sort of was getting distracted with the protocol, so to speak. Should we unmute ourselves, raise our hand, write in the chat? I, I'm not, but just I, I love Garcia Marquez. I haven't read the latest book yet that's been published posthumously by his family and you're right apparently he he wanted the book destroyed but they have gone ahead and published it but I, I love his work so much Un, unlike you uh, Peter um, but I I read that I I was a an undergraduate Spanish major and it uh, okay. yeah. I, I didn't cheat I, I read it in Spanish even though it's been translated and it it, it seemed to take me forever to read it so that was my joke you know it's taking yeah. Hundred, hundred years to read this book. but it's great to read in uh, an author's language too if, if yeah. you can yeah. the cultural nuances definitely yeah. i wonder if, if you read it in english as well i don't know if you did but sometimes when you read books in two different languages there's a there's a completely it feels like a completely different story yes um so uh, yeah, I, I, it's probably quite a big feat to do that, but uh, you know, I'd be interested in in the different versions. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, and Nicola, I just wanted to say to you, it's fine to have your video on, not a problem at all. Um, I was worried because we had fifty-two people register, so I was unsure if the fact we'd had the oh. bandwidth. But maybe uh, I should mute myself again, though, for better yeah, sound. Yeah. I think okay. We, yeah, put everyone on mute for sure. Thank you. Um, oh, great. Oh, thanks for sharing, Mona. That's great. Fresh water for flowers. Okay. Haven't read that one and forgotten on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We'll have to add those to my reads. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. So, look, I mean, I, I really just wanted to um, open up. I, I know we said we'd focus on the first section of the book, um, <laughs> but I know some of you haven't read the book yet. and um, I think there were some really great questions as well. So I just wanted to give people the opportunity to to just talk about the book, and I probably will do this in a you know in in a in a month's time. Um, I don't know who's uh, thanks. <laughs> um, I don't know who you know it might be a different audience, might be the same same audience, but I'm sure it'll be a different conversation with different questions. Um, so you know, I really appreciate everyone taking the time to like you know log in and pose their questions and I'm always only an email away if you've got you know if you've got any more questions um and I, I just you know in the last 10 minutes if anybody wants to share anything or um any reactions from the book or anything that they would have liked to have seen more of um then you know I'll see if I can meet that need in a different way on my on my website or other resources that I can share um if I could mention something Michelle, um, oh, yeah. the use of libraries you, you got in that first chapter, the use of libraries in bibliotherapy, which I think was really important, you know, and you made a really good point. That it reminded me of there was this uh, story of uh, a woman, Delphine Minoy, and she wrote about libraries in Syria. There was a, a group of, of uh, men who reconstructed a library in Syria for all the refugees and all the people who had been um you know uh, afflicted by the war there and they came to this library and began to read and you know it restored them it restored their humanity um mm -hmm. superb absolutely superb book um what's the book called Del delphine minoy um Why? is the writer now uh, I'll, I'll let you, you know, I, it'll probably, I'm trying to remember the title, the, the title, but um, but the book was just so good. And, and when, you, when I read your piece about the importance of libraries in bibliotherapy, it made me think about that book that I'd read and uh, absolutely superb. And yeah. that, 
I mean, I think libraries, I always say libraries are, are the portals to selfhood. Mm -hmm. They just allow you to connect with your with your with yourself, but also with other people's lives and just you know it's so good therapeutic and and I it's it's great that they're doing that for refugees in Syria and allowing them to you know giving them that avenue yeah art to heal perhaps and um yeah in in the book like a lot of world war during the world wars and the american civil war hospitals had libraries attached to them that's right so there was a real like hospital librarianship as a as a career was like really taking off at the time um and i think it's something that we need to come back to especially now with you know libraries losing a lot of public libraries losing funding and being closed down i think we really need to reinvigorate that space um so i think that's a really important message um i mean and i and i i mean i'm, I'm from kenya but i went to kenya in april last year and even in the maasai villages they had you know they had somebody come in and put up a little home for life for, for books that the maasai right, yeah. tribes could have access to so i think it's it's just they're so they're just libraries are just incredible and i think whether you're rich or poor i think you know everyone should have access to them mm -hmm. um so oh somebody's joining a little bit late um but yeah so you know yeah i don't know if if, if people wanted to sort of add anything or kind of raise anything that they didn't see in the book that they would have liked to have seen or any other questions that they would have liked to have addressed um then i think in the last few minutes we can we can do that mm -hmm. anybody else got anything oh i think nicola has a question you're her raising it Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for letting me in so late. I'm sorry I'm, I'm so late. Um, I am uh, coming at the, um, the, the book from the point of view as a positive psychologist, um, which is psychology all about well-being. And um, um, before I did that I was an English teacher so I'm kind of like right there with you um on your on your mission I I totally am totally behind you and I was really excited to read your book um I just uh in in the book you mentioned a, a bit about some of positive psychology concepts like the concept of flow um uh but and gratitude actually um you didn't mention an awful lot as far as i can see so far i haven't quite finished it i haven't got to the final chapter um about hope the concept of hope i wondered if you had thought about that in terms of reading yeah i i think i just mentioned it at the end of um Tatiana's story did you read Tatiana's story yes yes um, yes I did yes and there was there was mention of that and I thought yeah because, just mainly because it's something that I'm really interested in and specialized in that um I thought oh you know this this could be developed a bit further yeah I think so I think there's definitely a space for her like you know the affirmations and visualizing alternative features were probably the two techniques for cultivating more hope. I don't know if you if you came across them in in the first um, in my story, but I yes, do I did. space. There's more that we can do with hope, um, especially because it it is the antidote to loss, right? And so, um, so life is not only a series of losses, but it's also a series of hopes. So yeah, I, yeah, that's 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 really helpful feedback and. Um, I think now that you've inspired me to sort of <laughs> go back and look into that a little bit more. So thank you so much for that, Nicola. Um, I will try and, yeah, see what else um, we can do in that space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Did, did, I think somebody else had raised their hand. Uh, or maybe not, okay. 
I thought I saw someone, but no. Okay. Um, ah, hope in the age of anxiety. Thanks for sharing that recommendation, Nicola. Appreciate that. Um, I think, yeah, I think, um, were there any more questions? Oh, yeah. Will the recording be shared? Yes, I'm going to try and share the recording, Kathleen. I um, I'm, I think I, I missed the first five minutes of, of the session, but um, I don't think that should be an issue. Um, so I would like I would like to share it because lots of people have requested it. But I just want to check with everyone on the call that they're OK with that. Um, yeah, OK, fine. Great, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the thumbs up. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll probably put that on like a YouTube or something so that people can have access to it. Um, but yeah, that was oh, one more question from Linda. Uh, well, kind of a comment and a question. I, I just recently got the book and I just started to read it. So I feel like I'm bursting with questions, but I want to read your book first. So I'm looking forward to the next meeting. Wow. Oh, great. Yes. What specific questions related to the book you've written? Because um, I, as I say, I've just started it. Um, yeah. Oh, now yeah. I got the second part of my. Oh, I think you're offering. I saw somewhere that you're. Are you offering a new online class? So I, I had taken um, a class of yours, a training. And I completed it. I got a certificate. But I think maybe are you offering something new or is that the same one I, I did? I forget what mental health and bibliotherapy or something along those lines. Is yeah, that that's it? right. That's that's the that's the that's one of the courses. And I think at the end of last year I added um children's bibliotherapy skills as well, which is slightly different to the um to the main course because it's very sort of specialized with kids. Right, right. Okay. But um, so that's so that almost, course the same. Um, the same that you've been offering. Yeah. So the first one is the oh, same. Okay. So I've done it. it. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I feel like um, I've had lots of requests for different sort of you know offshoots, and um, so I. Well, I have some specific. Uh, I mean, I mostly work with immigrants here in New York. That's probably okay. why, I, you know, I speak Spanish and I have a lot of Spanish speaking people. I, I started teaching English to speakers of other languages and, and that has kind of morphed into what is becoming more bibliotherapeutic, if you will. Wow. Yeah. There's so many issues in addition to acquiring language to, to function, you know, in society or, or to at least um better one's life um uh, so that's kind of what's happening and oh, great. So yeah able to use some of the tools on from the course yes with your work with, yeah which is i mean it's 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 it i mean i think it goes hand in hand because as a, as a refugee you've, you've experienced so much change and loss um an identity um a bit of an identity crisis as well so i think it's really um yeah it's really useful i think um to use some of those active bibliotherapy techniques that i call them with 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 clients who are also learning language um as you would as you would do with children you know it's um i mean yeah it goes hand in hand yeah i did, I did that course uh, linda that um, you mentioned that you know with uh, bijou i did that a course and then the book is a real development a, a fantastic development of that course you know oh, really, yeah. really it's, yeah. it's, there's so much more in the book i think than in that original yeah. mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's so beautiful by the way that just the cover i love i just had to <laughs> tell you that <laughs> i'm sure a lot of thought just went into these colors so thank you so much so you're in new york and you've got it wow <laughs> yeah yeah i have well i paid a little for the shipping but not much you know a couple of couple of dollars i mean it was not oh, a big deal. I, I got it easily yeah through yeah. amazon oh that's great that's great yeah. to hear because yeah, you i was worried about the shipping but i but i think blackwell somebody mandy mentioned blackwells as well is good it was, for it was sent to me through uh something called rare waves oh okay 
Yeah. Mm. Whatever. In 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 the UK. Okay. Oh, I haven't. I'll look them up. No. I haven't come across them. Um, and and yeah. the discussions are an hour. Because I was just yeah. like rushing yeah. from work with the time difference and. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. I know. I I didn't really think about the you like. No, you know, it's still late there, though, right? It, um, you're what four hours ahead because we just we changed the clocks. This yeah, yeah, or four hours or four hours ahead. But at I, least it's not as bad as LA, like, like California, <laughs> which is like you know another. Thank you so much, both of you and everybody. Yeah, I know. Thank you. I thank you to everybody for attending, and you know, I really appreciate. I know giving up your Tuesday evening, uh, Wednesday evening. Sorry. Um, it's it's appreciated and um you know like let's just keep spreading the word uh, about about bibliotherapy and um you know that's that's really the mission um so uh yeah i'm looking forward to the next one and you know feel free like if to email me questions in advance or you know make sure i'll be come prepared um and um yeah enjoy the book if you if you're reading it and um do let me know how you get on with it and if you've got further questions i'm, I'm always an email away um and thank you to peter for co-hosting today i really appreciate that uh, well done Bijo. you've done very well <laughs> very good so, oh no thank yeah. you for all your support all of you as well like with yeah. the questions. well tonight after all that i think <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay all right, well, I'll let you get back to your lives <laughs> and um, happy reading. And um, thank, thank you so much. I'll, um, I'll just sort of end the call. Um, I've got to take a little picture, actually. <laughs> I always take a little picture of like <laughs> the event. There you go. Um, it's just for me. Well, or maybe I'll <laughs> um thank you mix so thank you thank you us thank you everyone okay. if you want to if you want to uh text me or ask me you know anything visual feel free you know because i'm i'm ha quite happy you know to to talk this over you know to see how well you did and you know all that but, uh, oh yeah yeah that would be great just yeah. to kind of um like a, like to do um a bit of a, a debrief yeah if you want you know if you want to let me know okay okay Just, yeah when when you've got some to free time you can set something up um i'm quite happy to do that yeah that would be are you sure like i feel like you've you know given up a lot of your time already <laughs> it's all right well um I've just I've just kicked everyone. I've just removed everyone. <laughs> I felt like they were eavesdropping on our conversation. <laughs> oh, okay. No, well done. Really good. You know, you've you've kept going. You've kept. You know, you had a because there weren't and there weren't many people coming forward. Were there really? Yeah, I think it was it was a little bit introverted, mm. but. Um, you know, I expect to try like a lot more people to join, but you know that's always the case. It's always yeah, going to be the way, actually. These things they always it's always like this, and you don't they don't put their faces on, or you know, it's always the way. I find. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was okay. You know. Yeah, no, I think it went really well, and um, actually, the, the the focus wasn't on the first section so much. Mm -hmm. Maybe for this for the um next two sessions i'll just mm -hmm. i'll just change it to talking about everything right right yeah. did it help me butting in you know chipping in was that all right yeah i thought you were brilliant i thought <laughs> you, you you added so much um like you just added a lot of you know flavor to the conversation especially when like there were there was bound to be a silence yeah <laughs> like, <they're> really <laughs> and i i mean i don't know if if and i and i, I don't want to have like to ask you again but i don't know you're welcome to do the next two yeah. or or i cannot get someone else or you know i really don't want to um it's in my diary for you know i put the two dates in my diary so. you did amazing <laughs> thank you so much i hope how was it for you was it okay was it 
very interesting, it really was interesting. And, and I was really pleased that I was able to contribute, you know. <laughs> You know, I kept thinking about things like when you mentioned the pandemic, I thought, yeah, I read War and Peace, you know. And yeah. so, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Bibliotherapy really took off during during the pandemic. Yeah, that's right. I mean, people, people began to read more and book sales have gone up. You know, I, yeah. I've got, I mean, I'll, I'll look it out, but I've got a whole, an article about how the younger generation are now reading much more than they used to yeah since the pandemic yeah, like, kind yeah. Of reading has taken off it's yeah. it's um it's got to become sexy <laughs> you know as they say you know reading is sexy so you yeah. know great you know it's something that people are now doing more and more of um but i'll find that I'll, i look out the i've got i've got a whole folder like about that thick of articles about reading and the benefits of you know um sort of culturally you know cultural yeah. uh, significance of it um and uh you know it was all going to oh you know the the, the idea, my idea of the book it isn't really it's it's not really working out so <laughs> well it's the academic yeah I decided, yeah i decided to pull back on it actually i don't think it's really? okay I don't think it's going to be, you know, for me. I'd rather go. I'd rather do things like this, you know, and um, and things at uh, Ezria, you know, things for Ezria, than mm. write a whole book. <laughs> yeah, no, I I know it's mm. a lot of work and it's a big commitment. And um, yeah, like now looking back, I'm like, I don't know if I can do another one. You know, <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> It's a lot of work and the launch and the marketing and just mm, mm, you know, yeah. beyond just writing the book. Yeah, but you, you, you know, I think it's marvelous to have to have achieved. It's what an achievement to have produced that. Just think to yourself, what an achievement <laughs> I've done. You know, <laughs> you should be really proud. I mean, that woman in New York having holding your book. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, fantastic yeah it was really nice to see <laughs> yeah. anyway, it was nice to see that it's spreading you know to different parts of the world and i can understand why nobody from california turned up because it's just like midday <laughs> <laughs> nobody's got time to attend a book club <laughs> at midday but it's um, got really wide reach you know i mean i mean this zoom is zoom is fantastic you know it's just a fantastic medium for getting people together uh um once they get used to it you know and people, you need to get used to zoom it's a kind of um i mean what we what we didn't really see was you couldn't really see the questions i don't you know they, I, I could just see the questions coming in at the bottom but oh, well okay so you can read them yeah i just read but i had to read them but they they disappeared then they didn't stay oh right okay yeah because you know the the triangle square and circle icon Am I, yes, I was I perhaps using the wrong icon. Oh, you know, I didn't even launch the poll. No wonder nobody answered the poll because they couldn't see the poll. <laughs> I didn't launch it. I was meant to launch it. <laughs> so I wonder if that also happened for you. Mm -hmm. Can you see the, can you still, can you see the questions when you go to the Q&A? The questions came in and then, then, then went, then just went, disappeared. So if you go to like, um, Ah, oh, okay, okay. Uh, oh no, no. Allow Q and A in live stream, so you should be able to see it. So if you go to the triangle, square, and circle icon, yeah, and you click on that, and then you click on Q and A. Mm. Can you see it? Can you see the Q and A option there? Um, where at the bottom? Uh, I've got chat with everyone. I've got activities yeah if you look at activity click on activities yeah so when you click on activities uh -huh. um can you see can you see q a uh, all i've got i've got activities breakout rooms polls q a yeah so click on that q a q a ah that's it ah yes 
I should know this because I've done it, you know, but it's when you're t- <laughs> you oh, forget, yeah. don't you? You forget. <laughs> yeah, you do. And um uh, oh here we are. Hi Bijan Peter. I am a rich oh fantastic. Yes, and I heard that one. Yes, that she she did ask that one. And then I work with people who often have said learning difficulties. Yeah. Kathleen. Yeah, she's the one for the graphic novels. Yeah. Do you ever recommend children's books? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Well, the recording will be shared. I took some notes, but pretty sure I missed a few things. Can you tell us more about the physical? Well, I didn't start the recording in time, but it's okay, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, now I can start. That's what I should have. That's what I should have clicked on, and I didn't click on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>